Good morning. Have you ever found yourself needing a place to live? Have you ever taken a job first and thought about housing second? Have you ever found yourself in a life situation or a life event needing to get out and to move to a new place to live? Housing insecurity takes many, many forms. And for resource-strapped rural communities, housing is a precursor to community success. And it also is something that places the community between thriving and surviving. Imagine being a recent college grad with no secured employment. Your lease is up. You're thinking to yourself, what's your next move? You just spent your four years, five years, or maybe two years at college investing in yourself in your education and thinking about maybe not as much time on how you're going to take your next step in your life. You're faced with a very difficult decision. Do you chase that urban dream, the glitz, the glamour, the big city, the big buildings, the big parks, all of the amenities, the public art, the culture, the community identity of a large community, like many of your peers might do? Or do you move back home, maybe to live with your parents, to be faced with the stigma of moving back to your hometown? And this is where rural communities really have the edge. Lower cost, uh, thirsty employers for talent, the opportunity to make a big impact, to leave an impression, the adage of a big fish in a small pond, perhaps. However, many rural communities lack the affordable and the available housing for recent college graduates or for young people. Then the reality sets in. Cost is a factor. You don't have employment. And that savings that you've earned over the course of your college, uh, college career, or maybe the, the small amounts of, of cash your family is giving you to survive through college, comes to an end. So you make the decision to move in with a parent or parents or a family member. It'll be for the summer, mom, I say. However, soon you realize Living back home is like living with college roommates. Where are you going? When are you going to be home? Do you have dinner plans? Then you go to the grocery store, always avoiding eye contact with your high school classmates that might also be back for the summer or visiting a family member for the weekend. Once the disdain for your hometown or living back in the community you grew up in wears off, that community feel sets in. Those once places that were the high school hangouts become a distant memory, but also a fond reflection of your past and the person you've become. You become more appreciative for the parks, the trails, the recreational opportunities, the cultural amenities, maybe the museum in your hometown. Then you also acknowledge its faults. Maybe you wish they had that chain restaurant or that franchise store that you, you experienced when you lived in college. You also acknowledge its many opportunities. You get involved. You spend time uh, connecting with the Chamber of Commerce, maybe getting involved with the Young Professionals Organization that's established. And you think about how do you see yourself solving those community challenges? Remember, it's just for the summer, Mom. Then you hear the common uh, complaints from people that have lived their, their entire adult lives. The young people are not returning. There's no new business moving to town. People are leaving. Young, young talent only leaves after high school and never returns. Then you think to yourself, surrounded by all those negative comments, how can this be true? I move back for the summer, maybe to seek employment beyond and find my own housing to move out of mom's house. Or you also see young families and peers of your high school days moving their families back or moving to town to start a family. Then you hear the mayor is going to retire. And you think, this is a once in a generation opportunity to make a difference. Opportunity for change, opportunity for modernization, opportunity to pursue that chain restaurant or that uh, large store that you always wished your hometown had. That opportunity to bring urbanism and urban elements to a rural community. Then you think, well, why would the electorate, who's been electing more uh, seasoned adults, the entire generation that you grew up to be their elected official, maybe their city council member. Then you remember you live in your mom's, mom's house. 
You're a roommate with your parents, but yet you want to make a difference and make a change. So you decide to buy a modest home, and then you enter the race to make a difference in your hometown. You choose to run for mayor, and you've got three opponents who are also wishing to make a difference, although a much different generation than yourself. And you run on a vision of renewed rural community, one that's reinvested in, one that isn't just cast aside as yet another dying paper mill town on the banks of the Wisconsin River. You invest in parks, you invest in recreation, you invest in all the amenities that those urban communities and all your peers in high school or in college are chasing in the big cities. You run on a, on a platform of housing and reinvestment in housing, and you make a case as to why a municipality should care about housing amidst a much bigger commentary of why the private sector or the market should be dealing with housing issues, not a public sector municipality. You win with 70% of the vote. Well, that was me 10 years ago, and I stand on this stage here in the Northwoods, not having any clue that I would find myself having a life in yet another rural community. After winning that election, you become surrounded with the realities of governing. How am I going to put these ideas into practice? And one of the first steps that we took, as it was a precursor to thriving rural communities in the 21st century, is addressing the housing challenges that the community face, both there and in the community of Rhinelander. Seniors are always looking for lower cost, lower maintenance, affordable places to live. Young families take their place in the opportunity that those seniors move out of those single family homes into something lower maintenance. Employers who are also thirsty for talent, looking for early career talent, maybe college graduates, maybe those that are looking for their second move, and they're also facing retention and recruitment issues uh, at every turn. Renters are always complaining about the lack of investment by their landlords with much to bear in terms of evidence. Landlords express significant waiting lists. The housing market continues to get tighter and tighter. That does not sound like a thriving community felt by all with those challenges. So where do you turn? You've got a million questions. You're hearing all this feedback all the time from public sector uh, constituents saying, we've got to do this. You should be doing more of that. You should be doing this with very, very limited resources, right? The, the, the resources that you're accruing are those public dollars, and their voice needs to be represented in how you're spending those public dollars. So you ask yourself, where do you begin? Obvious question that many of us find ourselves in, in when you take a new role. We began with a market assessment, and that market assessment took what we believe from anecdote and the evidence that might be coming from conversation, coffee clutch conversation at the restaurant, at the dinner table, to analysis. We needed an outside opinion, a third party perspective on the challenges facing the housing market. Obviously, that it comes with a sense of overwhelmment. You also look at the trends. What's the age of the, of the community? What's, what's the population demographics? Are their employers growing or are they shrinking? All factors when factoring a housing study or housing analysis. Here in Rhinelander, we've taken the step to do just that, really to gain a market perspective from a third party. And so over the course of the summer, we began uh, with public conversations, asking the public to engage and share their anecdotal, but nonetheless very important perspectives on the housing needs here in Rhinelander. Really with the goal to address affordability, availability, and the quality of the housing stock here in the city. However, we recognize that Rhinelander is only a dot of a much larger community. However, for the purposes of our study, our recommendations speak to Rhinelander specific. However, again, recognizing that the demographics of Oneida County are in some cases different than Rhinelanders, however, have a bearing on, on how we move forward. So the first step that we looked at was affordability. Income is obviously a key to understanding what the cost factor and the burden that, fo that uh, individuals face when addressing or uh, identifying housing opportunities uh, in a place to lay their head. For Rhinelander specific, 
so great, uh, sorry, excuse me, lower than 30% income or uh, spend 30% of their income on rent would be somebody that's defined as cost burden. So if they spend $3 for every, uh, excuse me, 30 cents for every dollar they spend on housing, they're defined as cost burden. And for Rhinelander, 39% of its community are renters. So understanding that the re rental market as well as the home ownership market are very different, uh, but have much interdependence when it comes to the affordability factor of people uh, looking for housing. At the same time, those 39% of the community that are renters, the four in 10, let's say, are living at 50% uh, below the median household income for a community. So the average median household income in Rhinelander is about $40,000 uh, per year, as compared to Oneida County at large, about $72,000 per year. So there's some very large disparities in affordability in the city limits and outside the city limits. And in Rhinelander, there's a significant mismatch between available housing and affordable housing. With median rents between $500 and $1,000 per month and about $800 on average, we have too many folks in this community that are cost burdened at present. We take a step forward and talk about age and quality. And when we talk about cost burden, the inability for landlords to raise rent, of course, putting additional burden on those, proper, those tenants, have the inability then in turn to invest in the property at large. And in Rhinelander, the significant uh, importance of the housing study called out the age and quality of our housing stock. If you look, there's a, there's a significant disproportion of properties built prior to 1939 when comparing to the early 2000s. So we're talking about 19th, 20th, and 21st century here in terms of our housing stock. It's, it's uh, evidence that the 2014 or later is barely even significantly shown on the uh, owner-occupied uh, housing stock here in the community. Excuse me. We look at renter-occupied, the same is true. Very few and a very small, uh, very disproportionate amount of new construction in the 21st century or the, la the latter of the, the 20th century. Uh, with 23% of, of uh, the owner's household uh, cost burden here in the community, the majority of them are low income. And most of these are uh, elderly or seniors that are likely recent retirees that are looking to potentially move from that single family home into something like uh, an apartment complex or a, a very um, independent uh, duplex kind of arrangement. 40% of homeowners in Rhinelander are low to moderate income. And oftentimes, as mentioned, they're aging adults or seniors who have lost income because of retirement or maybe job loss or pulling out of the job market because of, of health reasons. And so the correlation between aging housing stock and aging tenants or aging homeowners creates a, a very uh, uh, significant stress on the quality and the reinvestment in the housing stock. The other point we looked at in the housing study was availability. We all know, we all hear it, supply is incredibly tight. Realtors tell us this, people that you might know that are looking for uh, to move up in the housing market, to get out of a rental unit, maybe in to pursue home ownership. Rhinelander has uh, statistically about a 2% vacancy rate, which is a, generally a healthy rate. However, we look at that 2% generally as being uninhabitable or uh, properties that are completely um, uh, D deferred maintenance and, and haven't seen the investment and reinvestment necessary. You also saw that in recent decades, there's been very, very few housing starts. No new construction, no additional quantity into the marketplace. That ultimately drives up prices in a very, very tight market with individuals that are already cost burdened. We also think about how does this affect vulnerable populations? Thinking about the pandemic, placing an extra uh, magnifying glass on these populations. Here in Rhinelander, 480 individuals are going to be 85 and older within the next 20 years. That tells us a very alarming statistic that we need to be investing in the pipeline for those individuals to move out of their single family homes or apartments into something that might be some, uh, with some uh, form of independent to, uh, to some, some uh, supported housing. 30 individuals are estimated as homeless, and 24% of our households are ALICE, 
or asset limited, income constrained, and employed, also defined sometimes as the working poor. 500 households in our low to moderate income facing ambulatory needs, placing extra stress and burden on our EMS services, oftentimes relying on our EMS as the emergency department because they're not getting the support and the healthcare services simply because the, the senior um, assisted living facilities are not available. We also took a look at amenities, our recreational assets, our parks, our hospital, our healthcare services, retail, our downtown, all being significant strengths in the Rhinelander community as reasons why somebody would move to a thriving rural community. However, at the same time, the limitations of some of these assets, such as disinvestment or lack of budget, oftentimes results in uh, amenities that are sometimes sub viewed as subpar compared to those urban areas. We also take a look at uh, critical infrastructure. We all know that water, broadband, and, and access to food are basic needs. However, concerns not only for Rhinelander, but the Northwoods at large. Contamination such as PFAS is, a, is an emergent contaminant that the city of Rhinelander is contending with at present. However, it's proud to say water supply is currently PFAS free. We also took a look at the gaps and opportunities, really the conclusion of the, of the survey and the, and the study. There were 30 to 63 rental units over the next five to 10 years are projected to be necessary in Rhinelander to meet future and current needs. 26 to 74 owner-occupied or single-family homes uh, or condo units are also uh, uh, projected uh, to be necessary to meet current and future needs. And when I talk about those older folks, those more seasoned or elderly individuals, 261 independent living units are projected necessary now and in the next five years to meet needs to ensure that the, there's, a, there's a healthy uh, turnover or churn within the marketplace. And 91 additional assisted living units. So we talk about gaps and opportunities. We also talk about initiatives. Who are the partners that we can engage in some of the housing needs and housing challenges we face in order to promote a more thriving community? A housing committee, housing task force are being explored, taking a look at city-owned properties that might otherwise be sitting vacant and prime opportunities for new tax base and new development. Targeting rental properties, promoting the conversion from rental properties to owner-occupied so that there's more pride in home ownership and home maintenance. Soliciting developer interests. We know that developers oftentimes look past rural communities because they might be viewed as more expensive to do business or more challenging because the infrastructure isn't necessarily there. And then to identify tax credit projects for both workforce and low-income housing tax credit type projects. Habitat for Humanity, NewCap, Grow North, uh, Oneida County Economic Development Corporation, the North Central Regional Planning Commission, all entities that have a hand and a stake and a concern when it comes to housing development here in the community. And finally, local employers. How are we working with local employers to get them involved in development? Rural communities can and must thrive in the 21st century, despite all the odds, all the headwinds. Heck, it's what keeps many college graduates looking at rural communities as places of opportunity. Rural communities can thrive despite th very tight housing market and challenge situations associated with housing. Families open doors, heck, even for me, in the Northwoods. But don't turn the thermostat over 68 degrees and don't change the dials on the washer and dryer or your roommates might get upset. How will you help with housing? <laughs>